different creatures, 11 in Ross's list, six in Vasquez's. And Ross on a mulligan and the plays. We will be underway here. He will start on that main deck to rest. So we'll get a look at Vasquez's hand. He has four lands, all his colors beautifully set up. So we'll look over to the spells. And we see Dig Through Time, Planar Outburst, and then one other here. I believe Ultimate Price. Yep. And I, I am assuming this is going to be, just be the Dig Through Time. Yeah, to go ahead and take that. So Dig is gone. That leaves Ultimate Price and Planar Outburst plus four lands for Vasquez. It's a great opening for Ross to resolve a threat into. Unfortunately for Ross, it looks like he has at least one copy of Silk Wrap in his hand. Uh, and this is a matchup where mulliganing and then drawing creature removal spells, that's likely to just determine the game on its own. Yeah, we have seen that with Esper Control. There's this bind with Silk Wrap where you really don't want to have something like that against the deck. But if you don't have a card like Silk Wrap, Esper Control gets free reign on their Jaces, which even though they're a creature light deck, um, that's still fantastic for them. You have to answer Jace. Uh, I think the games we've watched this weekend where Jace has gone, a uh, turn two Jace has gone uncontested, the win rate of the Jace player has to be north of 80%. So even though it's painful, you do need to play with some creature removal spells and matchups like this to prevent Jace from running away with the game. Yeah, we did see la yesterday, Kevin Jones, while playing against Esper Control, did go light on some other removal post board and a flipped Jace into the, eventually created an emblem and took over the game by itself. Players have just traded lands. Uh, Ross makes a fourth line and passes, and now we finally get another spell. This is from Vasquez. It is an anticipate end step. So a great duress from Ross, but no follow-up. Has to favor the control deck. Ross's side, we have a silk wrap. It looks like a quarantine field. Yeah, a very good anti-creature hand, but not the hand you want for this matchup. So yeah, Vasquez will continue the land trades. Ross also drawing a land. And we'll just keep this going for a while. Eventually, Ross will have to flinch and do something like secure the waste, go for a planeswalker. That is true. I don't know if he's got anything to do. I, I think his hand might be be four creature removal spells. That's a really tough place to be in. As we mentioned before, Vasquez hardly plays any creatures. One of them is Dragonlord Ojatai, so that, that doesn't even work. Still sitting on that planar outburst and ultimate price from the opener that Ross saw. Looks like though he's added a copy of Dig Through Time to his hand. That's a perfect kind of card for this situation. So we'll go back over to Christian. He'll continue to make land drops. We'll trade for a while. <laughs> land six from Ross. And Eventually, we'll start digging toward these late game cards for Vasquez. He plays cards like a scatter to the wind. Here's going to be an anticipate from Vasquez. And if we get to the Slugfest of a late game, all right, what is Ross, where's Ross going to go with this then? Well, the, uh, the way that he can catch back up in this is if Vasquez gets sloppy and Miriam is able to stick, stick secure the waste into something substantial. The problem is that Vasquez is on 19 going to 18 right now. So even a one sh a big one shot like that is not lethal. So it's going to be a challenge no matter what. Yeah, he gets a turn to clean it up with a card like that planar outburst. Yeah. And this all presupposes that Miriam draws the right mixture of cards. I believe right now he is simply sitting on, like I said, a, a number of creature removal spells. If he had a threat, he would have tried it by this point. I, I think so. It's not going to get easier to resolve anything. Yes, yeah, so looking through the main decks in Vasquez's deck, he has a copy of Scatter to the Winds. He has three Ojatai's Commands, two Negates, two Horribly Arise, and a Clash of Wills, and a Silumgar's Command for counter spells. And here we go for Russ's Knight of the White Orchid. He has six lands to Vasquez of seven, so it will trigger. Nice. <laughs> go some going. There you go. There's the two for one. Ross getting some card advantage. Outside of Secure the Waste, though, his deck doesn't really use land number seven, eight. Not like Vasquez's does. No. I mean, it's better than drawing yet another creature removal spell, but it's not going to tip the balance very much. And there's that ultimate price from the beginning of the game that we saw. It'll tr go after Knight of the White Orchid. 
Vasquez has since added a majoring network, starting to power it up. For finishers, when you're looking at Vasquez's deck, he does have a Dragonlord Ojitai in the main, a Dragonlord Silumgar, and one copy of Ugin the Spirit Dragon, as well as a Haven to go with it. You see Majoring Network, the colorless storage land over there on the screen can help these Esper Control decks power up toward a late game card like Ugin. We've seen that on camera this weekend. Also helps cards like Clash of Will maintain a little bit of potency when the game drags out. Some cards like that get pretty bad once the game progresses. And here's another Knight of the White Orchid Another two Ross. for one. Whew. Can you get those lands out? But for the mid-range deck like Esper, which is a mix of threats and removal spells, um, we've seen this deck actually be very impressive, very powerful. But there is an issue when he's playing this matchup where they're kind of doing the same thing, except because Ross doesn't have cantrips, doesn't have draw spells. He's a lot more at the mercy of his top of the top of his deck than Vasquez is. And a lot of the top of his deck is bad because he yeah. ha he's playing with a certain density of creature removal spells that do very little in the matchup. Yeah, his hand has Murderous Cut, Quarantine Field, and Silk Wrap in it. I, I think that's that's a big part of the reason that I like Esper Control a lot right now is because there's so many potent utility creatures. People have to play with so many creature removal spells. And I think that playing a creature light strategy just gives you a huge edge in a ton of game ones. For Vasquez, he's going to activate Shambling Vent now. I mean, I have to agree. You don't have, to, you don't have to convince me too hard about trying to put Jace in my deck. Still one of the powerhouses of the format. So we will see Stasis Snare from Miriam. Remember, Stasis Snare, unlike Oblivion Ring, it can actually go after lands. The card ha only requires that you exile a creature. Does not say non-land. So he can he can hit the Shambling Vent with this if Vasquez lets him. I'd be surprised if, if Vasquez picked a fight over this. Yeah, these decks, they rarely fight over their own threats. You see there, yep. The, the Shambling Vent will be under a Stasis Snare. For Vasquez, it'll just be an Anticipate. He still has 15 life points to work with, so he's looking fine right now. So ships some lands to the bottom, keeps a spell, powers up Majoring Network. This is all on end step. And we go back to Vasquez's turn. Looks like that Shambling Vent was going to attempt to block a Knight of the White Orchid. It didn't work as he'll now just pass back to Ross Miriam. I don't think that Vasquez had high aspirations for that block, was just trying to clarify the game state a little bit. And here's a card if he might fight over. It's Painful Truths for three. You see Vasquez, that'll force a response from him. He's going to go for Dig Through Time. Doesn't, don't really want the other player to get a draw three off here. Yeah, this is something that's, that's probably worthy of a fight here. The removal spell on the Shambling Vent, Vasquez lets that one go. I, I would counter this if um, this Dig Through Time yields a counter spell. And we'll see if it does. A lot of, of course, a lot of targets. Utter end among the ones in here. Horribly awry. Looks like those ones are not being selected, though. So we'll see what he did keep. Looks like a negate and a copy of Jace Vryn's Prodigy were the two takes off it. And is he going to pull the trigger on negate? If he dug there, seems like he would want to, and he will. Here's Negate for Painful Truths. Ross will not get extra cards. Swing from Knight of the White Orchid. That'll drop Vasquez down to 13. Ross has a follow-up with Wingmate Rock. We see if he wants to go for it, though. Ross does know about the Planar Outburst still in Vasquez's hand. Yeah, I think he, he can't really deploy more than one threat at a time right now. So uh, even though it's, it's painful here to be hitting for two while your opponent's drawing a bunch of cards and making a bunch of mana, the alternative is probably worse. Yeah, and that's exactly what he'll do. He'll just pass. We go back over to Vasquez's turn. He's going to cast that copy of Jace Friend's Prodigy onto the board. So now Vasquez with a creature of his own. Of note, Majoring Network has gotten up to four counters. So Vasquez is ready to fight a counter war, even, the, even on a fewer number of lands. Second Wingmate Rock. That's the draw for Ross. He'll play Silk Wrap. That one has been burning a hole in his hand since the beginning of the game. And again, not worth the fight here from Vasquez. It's likely Miriam has more creature removal in hand. 
Here's a swing. And Vasquez, tired of taking those those two points of damage. Well, actually, looks like he's going to he'll take the he's going to take the two and then go for an utter end on the silk wrap to get his Jace back. I'm not that big of a fan here of, of trying to pick this fight from Vasquez just because it's so likely Ross's hand is a bunch of creature removal spells. Even in an even if you do it on step, there's probably an instant speed one hanging out, and there's the murderous cut to the decay of Jace. No one tap, no planeswalker. I, I get Vasquez's line here. Ross needs to have an instant, and if he doesn't have one, then Vasquez gets to immediately loot and flashback, dig through time. Get which, a planeswalker, it, go it's to a town. Huge, huge swing, but. Uh, Ross has been sitting with five, six cards in his hand. He even missed land drops on an earlier turn in the game. So there was a point where his hand was five spells or six spells, and he wasn't doing anything. So he just has to be flush with the creature removal. Thinking lots of silk wraps. You see Christian with another Jace here. I mean, even if you're in Vesca's spot, like, I think your expectation on this Jace to survive has, has got to be little to none. Right. There is another take-through time waiting in Vasquez's hand. He dropped to 11 last turn on the attack. So Ross is making inroads. But we'll see from him. This looks like a murderous cut again. Maybe even be end step. On the Jace. Wants to get to have all his lands to untap with. Now, if Vasquez is vulnerable to secure the waste right now, then that makes sense to fight over the Jace because he wants to flash back, dig through time, and, and find something to counter that spell. Yeah, Secure the Waste is the one. You really can't let that resolve. Here's a swing from Ross. We'll attempt to put... We'll see if, see if Christian wants to go for a Shambling Vent block here yet. He's going to go to 10 for off a of fetch. Ross's draw for the turn was a Silk Wrap. He has two Wingmate Rocks and a Silk Wrap in hand. I believe he has a fourth card as well. So here's the 2-3 Vent. He's going to try to see if it can block. It might be able to. Yeah, Ross's line of play here might be let you block, play the Wingmate Rock, and take care of the Shambling Vent via Silk Wrap. So Vent blocks the Knight of the White Orchid. Knight is down. This does give Ross permission to maybe go for Silk Wrap and win. Yeah, Silk Wrap, Wingmate Rock. And, you know, he, he sort of hedges a little bit against the, the planner cleansing here because he's still only got one threat in play, technically. Yeah, here's the Raided Wingmate Rock from Ross Miriam. There's a bird. It will come with another one. Planner Outburst, rather, excuse me. Yeah, we are at the point where Vasquez can actually uh, also opt to awaken the planar outburst. Yep. So a pair of three fours, and Ross not you know does, not even going to bother with a card like Silk Wrap here. And end step, Vasquez will go for dig through time. At least game one, he doesn't have to worry about this being countered. And that is danger for Ross. He knows that Vasquez has a sweeper in hand. And now Christian will power up again. Look at, survey some options. Has murderous cut possibility for Jace. Takes two quick cards off that, though. We'll see just what he, what he was able to get. And Languish is going to be the play. There was a cl another clean answer to Wingmate Rock. We still know about the planar outburst in hand. See if Vasquez has a follow-up threat. He does. There's a copy of Jace. It's Jace number three for the deck. Though, as we've seen before, Ross still has still has not exhausted his supply of answers to creatures. Yeah, that's been the one benefit is draws definitely good against Jace. Here's Silk Wrap. All right, Jace gone again. Looks like for Ross we have Quarantine Field. Hangerback Walker and Wingmate Rock as the last, the last cards in his hand. So left without a threat, Ross is going to have to go ahead and go for another one. And two, four, six, that's going to be Hangerback Walker on three for Ross Miriam. 
That will work. He just hits the board. There are a lot of the, the cards, though, in Vasquez's hand. A lot of his removal exiles. And he is going to go for it. This is six mana. Actually, Hangerback will not resolve. This is Scatter to the Winds Awakened. And then now Vasquez cashed in the Majoring Network. And look at this. Three 1-1 one -one counters go on to Shambling Vent for Vasquez. And that is terrifying for Ross. A 5-6 lifelink is no joke. Yeah, this is better than really any threat in his deck. Activating this also pushes uh, Vasquez out of Secure the Waste range, which is important. What a great play. All right, so here's the swing from Shambling Vent from Vasquez on his own turn. That'll be a 10-point life swing. And Ross in trouble here. Not that many ways for his deck actually to exile a man land. You saw he did it with Stasis Snare earlier, though... I not that only one stasis snare in the deck, so he's not gonna be able to pull that trick again. I'm a little bit surprised that Ross is playing on from the spot. Okay, there's the concession. Time is a big issue in this kind of matchup. Ross's deck is not particularly fast, and if he wants to win two games inside of time against a slow deck, I think he's gotta let this one go. Yeah, and that's exactly what he does. So game one goes to Christian Vasquez and Esper Control, really capitalizing on the fact that Ross's deck has a lot of dead cards in it. We're gonna go to the sideboard. So let's look at some things. Quarantine Field, Murderous Cut, Silk Wrap, those things hurt Ross game one in the early game. However, once we got to the late game, the Silk Wraps did come into play, the Exiled Jaces. I imagine that Ross will try to cut down on those answers, but how does he, um, how does he navigate the part where he's, you know, he still has to keep in some, he can't have an uncontested Jace. Looking at the sideboard, are, are there better cards he can have to answer these things? Well, I, I think that he needs to just bank on the ability to attack Jace. I, I don't think he can really leave in a bunch of creature removal spells. He's got a, very, a lot of good sideboard cards here. The five counter spells and a dispel, two negates and two dis disdainful strokes. Those cards are great here, as is the Soren, the Obnixilis, and the Transgress the Mind. So those are very good options for, for Ross. I think he's going to bring in those eight cards and cut way back on the creature removal. Probably not get away from it entirely. You do want to have some answers to chase and often Esper control decks do sideboard into some powerful creatures, but he can't have as much as he had game one. Yeah, I mean, look at sideboard. You talked about some powerful creatures they can side into. Christian Vasquez, this is something we haven't seen out of any of the Esper control decks. He's actually got a really big creature sideboard plan here. Three copies of Monastery Mentor. I mean, we've seen some two additional Dragon Lords on the sideboard, but talk to me about Mentor here. It's very good if it doesn't get killed. It's a game-winning threat on its own, and if Ross completely bails on his creature removal or, or comes close to it, a turn three Monastery Mentor can win the game for Vasquez on its own. It's also very risky, because if Ross has just left in some Silk Wraps or some Utter Ends or some Murderous Cuts, because he anticipates some creatures, Monastery Mentor is a low-impact card. So uh, that'll be an interesting thing to see. I assume that if there's three copies in Vasquez's sideboard, he's bringing it in most of the mid-range matchups along with the Dragon Lords, just assuming that the opponent is cutting creature removal spells. I think you can bring in the two copies of the spell, the Read the Bones, and the three Duresses here regardless. Duress also pairs very nicely with Monastery Mentor, but uh, that's a high-risk, high-reward card here for Vasquez. Yeah, and if you look at it post-board, so Vasquez could have two Ojatais, two Silumgars, and three Monastery Mentors post-board. He, he almost will feel more like a mid-range deck. And Monastery Mentor, not only can it win the game on its own, it also can prevent Secure the Waste from becoming much of an issue because you can just generate enough tokens where Ross can't go wide around you. So there's a yeah. lot of upside to the card, but there is a very big risk that Vasquez puts it on the table, Ross just untaps and kills it, and Miriam got to cash in one of his low-impact cards for one of Vas Vasquez's sideboarded cards. That is one of the interesting things. Monastery Mentor is a card that actually, you know, it's very powerful. It sees a lot of play in Legacy. But then we have decks like Jeskai Black, you know, a deck that could easily play Monastery Mentor, but it really doesn't in the format. I'm wondering just how much of that is a consequence to things like Fiery Impulse uh, around in the format. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of factors with the, with the threat answer dichotomy. In the, in the format. It's really complicated building these decks. Uh, I think that it's very important for people to be have to have answers to Jace, because even the low creature decks right, right. play it, and the games where Jace goes unchecked, I think that player has an overwhelming advantage. 
But once you get past that, it, it gets a lot more complicated. And there's a lot of trading back and forth in, in threats and answers and the way that people try to build their decks to maneuver around the threat answer dichotomy. It, it's definitely all about Jace, though. So this is a situation where because people have answers to Jace, they generally have answers to Monastery Mentor, and maybe he's on the outside. That, that's the big problem, I, I think. At least game one. We don't see a lot of Monastery Mentors game one, and that's because it just lines up very poorly with Fiery Impulses, Wild Slashes, Silk Wraps, I mean, you can engineer situations where you're playing it and a spell in the same turn and at least getting a little bit for your trouble, but I think the presence of Jace is just bad news for Monastery Mentor. All right, we're taking a short break here from the match. There was a judge call involved. We will fill you in on that as soon as we know about it. In the meantime, if you haven't been playing in, over the last year, you may not have heard about Star City Games Game Night. That's something we launched last year and it's been an overwhelming success. So what this is, is that local stores in your area all over the country are running SCG Game Nights, which means just for a, a regular weekly tournament, Star City Games gives exclusive pins and and tokens as prizes. Every month we change. This month it is the Otter token. Next month, for just in time for the holidays, we're going to premiere the Reindeer token. That's a zero one caribou. For all of you guys, of course, with your caribou range decks, you know, your Ice Age cards. If you're not, we have a token for that one. Uh, right here. This is one of my favorites, actually. Yeah, and then in January, come down the pipeline here, we have the first one of 2016. It's Grizzly Brand. Again, starcitygames.com slash game night for more information. Contact your Star City Games in-store play representative if you're a store trying to get this program set up. And for Canadian store owners and players, keep in mind that we've just changed the shipping rates, so we're only charging U.S. domestic shipping rates to send these kits out to Canada. If you haven't brought game night to your store because of the shipping rates, please bear in mind that's changed. If you're a player, talk to your store. And if you're a store owner, head over to starcitygames.com slash game night or contact your Star City Games in-store play representative. All right, so what's your... Looking at Grizzly Brand, I'm a huge fan of this token. I really like it. What is your favorite card that makes 5-5 five, five flying demons? If you, if you had to, if you, you know, I'm going to build a deck because I, I want to put that guy into play. I'm going to I'm gonna have to make sure I do that. 5-5 five, five flying demons. That's a good question. Well, the most recent one we had was Priest of the Blood, right? Which is a cool design. Yeah, the 2-2 two, two makes, makes one. He makes you pay a life for it every turn. But it's, well, the Priest itself deals two to you. Yep. And then the Demon itself is unchecked. So if you have a way to sacrifice the Priest for value, like Nantuka Husk or, or so forth, Bone Splinters, then you build yourself a little combo deck. And we have that guy. Um, some of the other cool ones for that, what is it? We have Skurstag High Priest, first of all. That, was oh, like, yeah. that yeah. one's great. I actually played that card at an Invitational, so I do have a little bit of a background with that card. And yeah, that was one of the mainstays of Aristocrats, back uh, the Tom Martell deck that won Pro Tour Gate Crash. I believe had copies of Skurstag yes. High Priest. Yep. Um, we also have Demonic Rising, that's from Avacyn Restored. Okay. That's uh, if you only have, what is it, if you have two or fewer creatures at your end step, you get a demon. Or maybe it's just one creature. You, you, I know it, it, yeah, it's at the beginning of your end step, if you have exactly one creature, you get a 5-5 five, five flying demon. So it's two, it's if, if you get one demon, he brings a friend, and then if they ever kill one of the demons without killing both, you get the other one back. And another thing that works well with sacking for value, although it's a little costly to engineer that setup. Yeah, I mean, this one, I, know, I remember playing this one in Limited. I haven't seen it too much in Constructed. This card was near unbeatable in Limited. I can I give play, you that. I played very little Avis and Restored Limited, so I don't know too much about that format. Though from what I heard, it was not... It was not the most popular one. Um, yeah, it was. I think it was a situation where we saw what happens when removal is really bad, and it, it can be pretty dangerous. Um, cards like Druid's Familiar were very powerful, but this card was great, and this one lets you make Grizzly Brand tokens, which already means I'm a fan of it. Yeah. So again, starcitygamescom slash game night. More information there. Get all your demon tokens. Get your caribou range tokens. <laughs> get your otter otter tokens. And we'll head back to the match. All right, Ross Miriam is down a game. Vasquez and Esper Control took game one, so we will go ahead and bring back to the match. Was a long judge call for this one. Sure. All right, so here's been the situation is that you notice that Ross Miriam picked up a win. Now, one of the things is that Chris, when you play with double-faced cards, like Jace Finn's Prodigy, if you play with checklist cards, you actually do need to mark the boxes on checklist cards. That be that's because in Christian's deck, uh, there are other cards that he could be playing. You know, he could be playing Liliana Heretical Healer. He could be playing Kithian. Uh, in this situation, he had unmarked checklist cards. And as a result, it was a deck registration error. So the penalty for that is a game loss. And that was awarded this round. So the game is given to Ross Miriam. So the situation means the players will start game three. Christian has, in effect, lost game two, which means he will get to be on the play again game three. So the head judge for this tournament is Eric Smith. Uh, he's someone who I've known 
the duration of my Magic playing career. Yeah, not Been a head judge in the New York City area since the in the 1990s, Grey Matter tournaments back in the day. Yeah, not to be confused with the player Eric Smith, who was also doing well at the tournament. Correct. Different person, but he is a judge who I hold in the highest esteem. I've known him for a very long time, and he is on the ball with this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, does mean that we'll just be having a two-game match here. Ross will get gets the win. Uh, Time-wise, it does take a lot of the pressure off the match for the players. Yes, and I do support that penalty, even though I think that the rules for deck list errors are a little draconian, because that is an opportunity for players to definitely get an advantage. Un unmarked checklist cards uh, potentially allow players to do some, some shady stuff. There are decks that play multiple different planes checklist planeswalkers sure. in the same deck. So... Uh, I, I like being strict with the rules enforcement there, even though it, I, I do believe that the deckless penalty errors are a little too extreme right now. Yeah, for the record, Vasquez does not have a Kithian or Liliana registered on his list. But we'll be going on to game three here. It does still seem like an appropriate penalty. There's, there's enough potential for for that to matter, that it, it, it's, it's really the penalty you have to, have to award. Here. I agree. So we start game three. Vasquez on the play. Both players will start off by trading lands. We see Christian. This is turn two on the play. May, maybe he will have that checklist card and Jace. We will see here. We've seen that before, the bind of the deck, where you don't want to keep in creature removal against Esper control, but if you don't, they may just go out, go with a turn two Jace and get bury the game off it. And I, I think that's Vasquez's sideboarding plan to some extent. If people are leaving in some creature removal as a concession to Jace, if you really overload on creatures, then something's going to stick. And Vasquez is playing with more creatures than I've really ever seen in, in these current standard iterations of Esper control. And no Jace turn two for Vasquez, just a pair of lands. We'll go back to Ross. It is Ross with the first creature. That's going to be a copy of Hangerback Walker on one. There's also something to be said for just having more creatures in your sideboard so you can finish matches in time. I know a lot of people like getting a little bit more threat heavy uh, just as a concession to the clock. Third land for Christian, we pass back. Ross will get to keep the Hangerback Walker around for a while. How much does that card matter in this matchup? It, it's not bad against the sweepers. Uh, it's on the slow side, and the decks do play with uh, utter ends and complete disregards. So. You know, it's something that Vasquez does have to answer at some point, and it can get out of control. It's unlikely to determine the game, but the, the floor on the card is still quite high. It's going to trade with something. And yeah. a, a low percentage of games, you know, when Vasquez needs his languish as his answer spell or is on other conventional spot removal spells, it could be kind of prohibitive. So for Ross, he gets some value off those Knight of the White Orchids again, doing a great mid-range job here. Gets an extra land, passes the turn, pumps up Hangerback Walker. And what I like from Esper here is that Ross has an army in play, and I feel like he's paid very little to have it. Yep. He's gotten some value out of the Knight of the White Orchid. The Hangerback Walker will be good if something happens to it that's, you know, targeted and on exiling. Ross has some stuff in play and still has a full hand of cards. All right, here's four damage coming across from Ross. No more pumping on Hangerback Walker. It's attacking Vasquez down to 15 and now 14 on instep as he fetches. No plays yet for Vasquez. He could have that turn activated Shambling Venge to attempt to block, but that seems like it was far too high of a risk for him to do. Yeah, the, the upshot is you get Knight of the White Orchid off the table, which is something, but not worth a whole lot. The downside is you get stone rained on an early turn in the game, facing down some pressure, and Vasquez was just not willing to incur that risk. Yeah, he just can't afford to do it. We'll see if he has an end-step play or there is just fetching. Just fetching here, and his draw looks to be a third copy of Dig Through Time. Dig Through Time, a great card in these decks, but three is an awful lot. Yeah, I, I think at this point, Vasquez would rather have something to, to prime the pump <laughs> rather than yeah. yet another copy of Dig Through Time. Makes his lander up. It is Mage Ring Network. That's not going to do much right now, though. Vasquez has yet to cast a spell this game. He's made five lands. This is uh, particularly true in the post-board games where Miriam is going to have some negates and dispels at the ready. So if you don't have a lot of things to get the graveyard filled up, you are going to feel it um, trying to get these dig-through times to resolve. Yeah, and look at Ross just push the issue here. On Christian Vasquez's end step, he's going to go for a secure the wastes for four. And we'll see if Christian has the counter spell. If he doesn't, this is dangerous. It's a lot of power in play for Ross. And if Ross has a counter spell, that may just be too much. And it's going to resolve. 4-1-1, so this is 
eight power for Ross. He has Christian at 14. That's a two-turn clock. And if Vasquez can't do anything here, he may have to gamble and block with the Shambling event now. He may not have a choice. And Ross thinking here, he has a copy of Gideon. If he wants to get really aggressive, he could, he could attempt to go for the kill here. Gideon plus Emblem is actually 14 damage. Here's Gideon. He's going to try for it. Can Christian answer? Gideon makes an emblem. That is exactly 14. This could be a turn, this could be lethal. This could be a turn six kill for Ross. Well, Vasquez still has the opportunity to block with the shambling vent. So he gets to pick up two life on the way back. And now uh, there's really nothing for Vasquez to play around except for murderous cut, I suppose. He just has to block. Okay. Yeah, and he's well, not even going to go for it. So Ross Miriam takes game three, and with it, the match moves to nine and two. And that was a spot where Hanger Back Walker did do some work. Vasquez conceded there because he knows even if he draws a sweeper, he's dead to the Hanger Back Walker leftover. So it's a card that doesn't determine the game that often against Esper Control, but a small percentage of the time it does. And the cost you're paying is very low. It's a card you're happy to cast anyway. It trades one for one at the worst. And I really like just how Ross played that. A lot of times you'll see players against her control deck kind of try to hold back and, you know, not really commit to the board. And Ross, value card early on with Hanger Backwalker, value card early, early on with Knight of the White Orchid, then goes for Secure the Waste, sends...